Hello, in this video we're going to explore how to add a dramatic pause to our text-based story. So I have a really simple story here. Once upon a time there lived a dragon and the dragon liked food. Great story. Notice when I run it, it just kind of spews it all out in one go. That's because remember the computer is actually executing this program starting from the main method from the top down. So as soon as it's executed one line it goes right to the other. But sometimes we might want a dramatic pause. And with that in mind, I'm going to pause for a second and just talk about something a little different. Um, I'm a really big fan of starting to program with text-based games. Um, the reason why is text-based games are, are a nice place where you can really make sure you understand those essential structures that are so important for programming later on. Often students, or not just students, anyone that's learning to program wants to dive right into GUI which is graphical user interfaces or graphics and what happens is they end up memorizing a lot of code without understanding. Um, definitely when you're learning to program there is a need to memorize certain pieces of code and not understand what they do but one of the things that's really important is finding the balance between that memorization um, and understanding and I think text-based games give a good introduction allowing you to, to to really solidify those skills. So let's continue now, shall we? Um, so like I said, I run this program, it prints my story, I want to add a dramatic pause. It turns out there's a class in Java, and remember a class is, right now we can think of it as a toolbox, and it has a bunch of tools that you can use. Um, those tools are methods, which consist of pre-written pre chunks of code that do something. And it turns out there's a really nice um, method in a class called the thread class called sleep and what that does is it causes the, the program just to pause for a second to take a little break and so I've actually gone online and already pulled up the documentation and this is the online documentation and a couple things we like to be able to recognize from this documentation is that first is the thread class is contained in the java.lang package um, that means we don't have to import anything because it's already imported um, and if we scroll down, you'll see a bunch of things that, at this point, we're not concerned with. And we'll see what are called fields. Right now, we're not concerned with the fields. We'll see constructors. Again, we're not concerned with constructors. What we're interested in right now are called methods. So there's a whole bunch of methods in here, far too many to memorize. And again, part of becoming a good programmer is not memorizing everything. It's understanding how to find what you need. And if I scroll down, is alphabetical, I'll see a method called sleep right here. And I'm interested in this sleep. This is an overloaded method, meaning that there's two methods with the same name, but notice the parameters are different. I'm interested in the sleep that has a single parameter. So again, it's important to understand when you read this documentation what you're looking for. This is the name of the method. This is what I have to give it. I have to give it a long, which is essentially the same as an integer. It's just a larger integer. Um, we can think of it as passing an integer in this case. And this is what it returns. It returns void. Now the word we kind of talked about was this word called static. We don't actually know what static means yet, but what I'm going to tell you is this. Anytime you see the word static in Java, we know that in order to invoke this method or get access to it, we simply use the name of the class. So in this case, the class name is thread. So if I do thread.sleep, it's going to invoke this method. So with that in mind, let's minimize this and let's go back to our program. So perhaps I want to put a pause. I could put thread dot O capital T. And you notice all the methods come up and I put sleep and I say, let's have a pause for one second. So I put a thousand milliseconds. So this seems okay, but notice I get a little warning here. Actually, you can't see it, it's just off screen. So but if I'll just hover and you should see it. Unhandled exception type or interruption. This is where we, we have a, a new type of structure we have to account for. It's called a try and catch. Think of it like this. A try and catch is, is put in place when we need the program to do something that could cause problems. What we're telling the computer is to try this and if it fails, we want to catch the exception. We want to catch the mistake that happens. Try and catch structures are really straightforward to write. We simply write the word try, then we open up a brace to make a code block. We put whatever we want to try inside the code block, and then we close it. 
and then after it we put a catch and we have to tell the catch what type of exception to catch again at this point I'll tell you that we're looking for an exception and we'll call that exception E um, it's not super important what happens here the program will never actually go into this code block in here in our case but what this means now is that if if I run this notice did you see that up here watch up here as I run it again it pauses for one second before going on to the next line so I could take these now and I could copy this and I could paste this wherever I want the program to pause for a second and now if I run it watch up here we have this dramatic pause so let's let's make this a little bit better we're gonna do a couple things to improve this um, the first thing I notice is that I have this code that's repeated a number of times and notice it's exactly the same each time if you have code that is repeated a number of times we can take that code and write what's called our own custom method so I'm actually going to delete this code from these three places for now and this last one I'm going to cut so let's cut that so remember how I said public static void main is a method we can write our own methods methods have to be inside the class so this is the brace that ends my class this is the brace that ends the main what I'm going to do is, is write my own method methods always start with public static and now we want to think about what the method returns I'll tell you in this case the method returns nothing because this method is simply going to pause and let's call our method pause and what do we want to give our method well we could give our method if we wanted an integer we're going to call it a so if I open up my brace and I paste that thread chunk in there so there it is what happens now is this is a separate method right here that can be called whenever I want and so whenever I call this method it's going to jump down to it execute to the code get to the end of the pause method and then once it finishes go back to where it was called from so if I go back into my main up here what I can do is I can type in the word pause and notice I have to pass it an integer so let's say pause 1000 and so what happens is when the computer sees the word pause if there's a method called that it jumps down to this method it puts the number 1000 into this integer and then it comes down and tries to run this it goes to the try tries to do the sleep thread dot sleep and we don't want it to sleep for a thousand we want it to sleep for a a millisecond so then if it's successful it skips the catch ends the method and once it's finished it comes back up to where it was called from and then continues on so what's nice now is I can call this pause method whenever I want and now if I run it it works really nicely one last thing to add to this students love putting this in their programs it's a great dramatic pause it gives their story some some feel um, but one thing I find is that students write programs that will be a thousand lines long and they'll have all these pauses in it and they'll want to test their code and imagine if you have three second pauses every every couple lines and it adds up really quickly but you want to go through your program quickly so a strategy which I think is quite useful is in your main method declare a constant um, so declare a constant final int and we'll call it P and set it to whatever you want your pause to be that means what I can do now is instead of passing it a thousand in each of these cases I can pass it P so if I run this program it runs exactly the same as before but let's say I was I was in a rush and I didn't I didn't want to wait for the pause I was checking a logic piece in my program all I have to do is change it in one spot and now when I run it it runs quickly so by using a constant in this case it allows us to speed up the actual speed up our ability to test our code and for those of you that were on on the ball here you'll notice that I made a constant and I didn't capitalize it so let's take a second and fix that etiquette error because remember capitalizing constants means that anyone that looks at your code will know right away that if they see a capital word that is a constant I hope this video helped